uh, quick update. So this is the Calvary Church and this is the operation where they feed people and inside there is kitchen, good food. So there is pretty good line of buses and different transportations behind me and they just delivering people and delivering you know sleeping bags and so on and so forth so i will be talking with a uh, pastor carlos in a few minutes thanks hello sir what is your name so carlos calza calchuk calchuk oh pleasure where are you originally from <laughs> uh, from originally from philadelphia my grandparents are ukrainian all right so you have ties brother yeah, yeah. all right so Pastor, tell us uh, about reality on the, both entrances. How? What is the weakest point? What is the hardest part? What's people trying to avoid and where you need most help sure. and attention? So we have teams on both the San Ysidro side and the Otay Mesa side, uh, both on the on the Mexican side and the U.S. side. And those those teams that are on the border, particularly this uh, Otay Mesa, we need more support. We need more help. Uh, the overnight shift is the, our weakest link um, because the Border Patrol, we never know when they're processing people. Sometimes they, they keep them in the, in the building until 5 a.m. and then release them all. And then there's 80 people waiting for rides. Sometimes they let them trickle and two in the morning you have people coming out. Four in the morning you have people coming out. So that's why we need people uh, on the U.S. side, uh, Ukrainian speakers, Russian speakers that can um, receive the Ukrainians that are coming across the border. In receive meaning what? Just give us practical what, so you know. once they cross, they would call us and we would have vehicles to pick them up and bring them here to the hub. To Do they have a phone number already yes. from it's volunteers? Already okay, so they... There's always going to be a, a head person here that they'll call and say, hey, we have a family of five. They need to be picked up. And we have vehicles ready and waiting to go down there. Um, but we need people throughout the night. The night shifts are the, our weakest link right now. So you don't need a, a particular drivers through the night yet, no. but you need the people who can be receivers and those yes. kind of a charitable yes. arms to exactly. kind of comfort in arms. a lot of drivers right now. We just need people that are waiting there okay. to receive them in the middle of the night. So this is very clear because yeah. it's so much chaos going on right now. So many people want to help, but they don't know. They, you know, afraid. Sure. Yeah. So, and if but, they have a passport, and they may speak Spanish, you know, or speak uh, Ukrainian or Russian, have a passport and want to go to Mexico. They, 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 we have 700 people waiting now on the border that we're working with, that we're trying to give blankets, food, uh, but we need translation help there as well. Uh, comfort, you know, at this point they've been traveling for a couple of days. There's a lot of questions there. They have to wait there for, you know, 36 hours, 24 hours. And so there's, there's need on the border as well. Uh, what was 150 was now 400 and now 700 people tomorrow the next day could be a thousand that are that are there waiting on the border yeah that's what we heard as well that it's number can increase you know we're not reach peak yet all right thank you very much and again what's a website for folks to register calvarysd.com and just click on ukraine relief they can choose whether they want to help with housing with driving or with helping uh on the border there all right, Pastor, God bless. Thank you very much. Take care. Hi, what is your name, sir? My name is Aaron Slavoda. I'm the pastor here at Calvary San Diego. So we heard a lot about this uh, church and about your name on the Facebook and everywhere. So tell us uh, in a few sentences how the operation goes and what, yeah. what's included. So what we're doing right now on our end, we're, we're coordinating both ends here coming up. But as of right now, we're truly just with the once they get into San Diego side. And so we have translators and coordinators at both ports of entries, Otay and San Isidro. Uh -huh. And once Ukrainians are coming through, we are accepting them there and bringing them here to what we've affectionately called the hub. We've, we've designated a whole portion of our church to just what we consider is like a triage, if you will. They come in. Continue, continue. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they come in to us and we welcome them and we share with them what it is that we can offer. 
And what it is that we're offering, first and foremost off the bat, is a ride away from the border. We all know the border is messy. Yeah. And so if families are coming to pick them up, that's the worst place to have them. Right. If, if, if they're go, trying to get to the airport, they're gonna get scammed by taxi drivers and everyone else. And so what we're offering is a completely free service and we're bringing them here. We're getting their names, their numbers, where their final destination is. And a lot of times they're coming across and they're saying, look, I have a plan but I didn't buy my ticket or anything yet because I don't know, I didn't know uh -huh. if I could get across. Right, right. And so we're saying, great, we've got our computer set up. Go ahead and print out your boarding passes and stuff. And once we see that boarding pass and it says, tomorrow's the flight at 7 p.m., great, we'll connect you with a host family in San Diego Network mm -hmm. and you will sleep there for the night and they'll take care of you for the whole day and then we'll take you to the airport to get you on the plane. So it looks like it's pretty, pretty well organized. I can see this live, live uh, deliveries going on. But uh, when did you start it? How many days ago? Yeah, so we've so been involved in this process for a few months. And let me explain what I mean by that. All right, go ahead. Our pastor, Phil, Phil Metzger, he started church planting in Hungary. And he was there 20, 25 years ago. All right. And he started all the church planting through Calvary Chapel. And when we started planting churches, Calvary right, Chapel right. churches in Ukraine, he sent all of those church planters out. And so when this whole thing started about two months ago, before the war even broke out, they called him and said, hey, there's some funny business happening get ready sort of deal and so we, our whole church starts praying towards this and then Phil flies out there for a couple weeks and he's boots on the ground figuring out how to rescue and 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 uh, and even resupply and do all of that through the Ukrainian border so now we have this is only half of our operation the other half is in Ukraine on the Poland border and the Hungary borders we are shipping medicine out we are shipping humanitarian need and aid out uh, to Ukraine as we speak mm. and so uh, so this, this side of the operation though only started about a, I don't know, we've been doing it for a while now, but maybe about a week and a half. A week and a half ago. Like ago. It, was, it was crazy in the beginning, right? It was very it was chaotic. No, in the very beginning, there was only a couple families. And so we thought, Phil actually told me, he goes, Aaron, just find a place for these couple families to sleep. And then one group chat went from a couple families to a few hundred people. And when it went to about 2,000 people, that's when I get a call from a man named David Slobodenko and he said, hey, I'm going to need your help. And I said, okay, David, great. I'll help you. And then that grew to 14,000 and he said, Aaron, I really need your help. <laughs> and we start this whole process. And so as of right now... If you so how many people you can host at uh, one time, so maximum? This is the thing. Yeah. We don't have a maximum because of our growth limit. And so... The, the, the maximum is actually based on the Border Patrol agents here in the United States. They're only allowing about 200 to 400 people daily to come through. And, and you're so, capable to... And we're capable to do that all day long. 200 to 400 people. 200 to people. 400 people easily because we're not having them all sleep here. Those all that are right. getting the host family, we're sending them out. And yes, so there's a yes. network of families that hold... These is people. this only through the church community or is some uh, secular families involved? So we started just with our church community. All right. And now, because we've gone through different news outlets and things, we've grown to be quite large. Okay. And so we have a vetting process on our website. If you go to calvarysd.com, you can hit the tab that says Ukrainian Relief. And when you have re Ukrainian Relief, there's two ways that you can help. We have a Give tab. And the reason why we're asking people to give financially and not through uh, water and food and all that is because the needs are changing and evolving every eight hours because right, right, the right. border situation is changing. So like today, the biggest change for today was we need hats and we need sunscreen. But you know what it was two days ago? We need umbrellas and then we need jackets. Uh -huh, because and it's so cold it's and rain. It's yeah, evolving yeah. every single, single day. And so that's where we need the help. The second portion of that page is how to get involved. And so if you're local in San Diego, you can fill out our hosting form to be able to host families. You can fill out our driver form to be able to drive families. If you speak Russian or Ukrainian, you can fill out our translator form and we need you fantastic, at the hub, fantastic. we need you at the border, or we may need you in Mexico. Give us Sentry or Global Entry Pass. We need you to start the supply chain down to Mexico so we're not being taxed on everything we bring down. So if we have a people who's like, what can I do? Who do they have to contact directly? Don't, and that's okay. what we're saying because we're trying to keep the line to open for the coordinators to talk right because all of our phones are getting so blown up with how, how do i get in contact and this and that once you fill out that form so this we'll is add a... you to a group chat okay and we'll communicate through you specifically through that group so chat. now now it's very organized very Absolutely. yeah okay all right and uh it, what is the situation with the bathrooms and sanitation on the side of the Mexico. What do you hear, what do you heard about that and how to improve that? I heard you working with uh, some uh, local uh, me uh, Mexican churches yes. to help this process. Yes. What, yes what is no. it? 
this side because we waited to get this side completely organized and now we are and now we're moving on to phase uh -huh, which is the uh -huh. Mexico side. So just because this is the the biggest problem right now. Because everyone who wants to get involved in 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 help, they go to Mexico. And when they did that, there's <laughs> no organization. Create more chaos. So there's hundreds of small little people going, "Oh, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you." But they actually can't help in the long run. And so now we're talking with government officials, and now we're getting the permits available to ship stuff down. We're getting the permit available to have bathrooms set up right there at the border. We're getting all of this awesome. available now. Awesome. So we just need a little bit more time to get Mexico organized. So uh, one more time. Uh, best way to get in, it's through the website. Through the website. CalvarySD.com. All right, and there is uh, multiple options, and you put them in particular chats if you want to be drivers, so yes. interpreters, so okay, just volunteers, fantastic. So and anything if you're else a big you want? to... Yeah. If you're a big group, big group, yeah. And you're going, oh, you know, we have 50 interpreters, we have this. I don't, I can't have all right. 50 of my people sign up. It won't be quick enough. Great, we have a group form. Send out that group form, and we will give you a call immediately to see is this the best place for you to serve in and if so we'll get you to the necessary people you need to get to. so you have like a receptionist or somebody who's uh, right on this task uh, answering phones or calling people well, right exactly all right exactly receiving it so is this now your full-time ministry it is now <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can uh, in the in the upcoming days if we can get a few hours to go sleep so do you expect uh, the flow and the quantity of refugees increasing decreasing what is your we, expectations we don't believe we've met our peak yet not yeah and uh, but we also expect at some point for there to be a big drop-off when this administration in the United States allows them to fly in once we allow them to fly in uh, and we have good intel that right now they're working uh, in Eastern Europe, they're sending Border Patrol agents there to start working through the permitting process before they ever even come over. And if that starts yes. happening, they can so catch we'll, flights we'll, to come in and, and we will no longer have the crisis at the Mexican border. And do you know any other point of entrance uh, to the United States for the Ukrainian ref refugees? Are they coming through other airports or any other borders? I don't see them coming through any anything other than foot traffic right now. And so for that reason, many flights are being redirected to Tijuana, right? If you fly in to Mexico, they're trying to go Cancun to Tijuana, Mexico City to Tijuana, and they're actually having delayed flights because of it so far. Mm. Yeah. Anything ca happen in the Canadian border? I haven't heard from him. This is our backyard. That's why we got involved. <laughs> you know, we're 10 oh. minutes from the border. All right, Pastor. Anything you want to add or uh, encourage people yeah. uh, who wants to donate, who wants to, you know, just uh, support and uh, express empathy? Yeah. What, what do you want to say? What, do you what say? I'd like to say. May God bless you in your effort as you seek to use your gifts to be a part of this crisis. People need it. People truly need it right now. There's families that have been traveling for days, if not weeks. And what we're asking is this. We have been blessed so abundantly. We know that we live here in this country that hasn't hasn't seen more on our soil in a long time. And so let's give back. Now is our time. You've been praying, you've been doing all these things, put feet to your faith and move and move and watch how God does this. We're just we're just trying to be the beacon and, and really the conduit of getting it to them. So don't feel it by any means that your money's not gonna get there. 100% of everything's going there. We don't want your money. God doesn't want your money. The Ukrainian people right now need it though. And so we're gonna help them with that, all right? God bless you guys. Thanks, man. Take care. God bless you too.